Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Art of NFT Business. Florian will be joining us shortly. He is in the middle of progressing through the USL Open. Uh, and uh, so he's probably pretty tired this morning uh, at 7 o'clock a.m. on the East Coast. And we've got an amazing guest with us today, Jeremy Ian Tom Thomas uh, Solajit. Uh, he is on the West Coast, so it is even earlier. Uh, we're going to be interviewing him in a couple of minutes. I just, of course, wanted to you know, wish everybody a good morning and uh, hope you're all doing well. And of course, remind you that this is not financial advice. We are not financial advisors. And this interview does not constitute an endorsement of any of the artwork that we're going to be talking about and have talked about previously. So our guest today is Jeremy Ian Thomas, aka Solajit. Uh, Jeremy uh, is a Los Angeles-based multimedia artist. He began his artistic journey in 1994, recording his first song under the moniker Surreal while still in high school. He attended the Los Angeles Film School, delving into the extensive world of light and shadow as a professional colorist and creative director. Today, Jeremy creates images imbued with psychedelic symbolo symbology, Bridging the Gap Between Art and Commerce. Welcome, Jeremy. Thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Very excited to chat with you guys. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Jeremy, you know, you are the first digital artist to have work sold in a car auction. On January 27th of this year, R.M. Sotheby's offered an NFT designed by you, along with the world-famous supercar, the 1988 Cezetta Moroder, and I probably screwed that name up. Oh, you the, got it. I did. The okay. V16T prototype, previously held by the father of disco, Giorgio Moroder, who also contributed a four track EP of new music to the auction sale. Jeremy, how did that sale go? And how awesome was it to be one of the first, the, the first artist NFT in an auction like that? Yeah, it was funny. Um, it was an amazing experience and it happened to land on my 44th birthday. So January 27th <clears throat> was my birthday and we got to go to Arizona to the auction. And until that moment, I didn't know I was the first digital artist to sell at Sotheby's. And I also didn't recognize how prestigious Sotheby's was. So I had had my sights set on Christie's because one of my heroes, Beeple, sold at Christie's, right? So I was like, if I, if I can get into Christie's, and then when I when they announced it, you're, you know, so legit the first ever digital artist of Sotheby's. And then I was told Sotheby's is actually more prestigious than Christie's. Uh, I was elated. You know, what a what an accomplishment. And, and the beautiful part about that, I wasn't focused on the accolade. I was focused on the work. And then that was just more proof of just staying on my path, the accolades will, will just come, you know. That's awesome. Tell us a little bit about how you made the progression uh, from, you know, artist, musician into the NFT world. So I've been a musician. I, I recorded my first song when I was 14. So I've been in the, the, the arts kind of in the music side for most of my life. Traveled the world, did, did tours with like De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest, and was an actual professional musician. Then I had my son in 2006 and realized I couldn't be on the road 300 days a year and be an effective father. So I went to film school, got into filmmaking, started directing, editing. And probably around 2008, I got into 3D design. I was like starting to mess around in cinema 4D. Then I found Beeple's work in 2010, Mike Winkleman, and was baffled, like not, not understanding how's this guy doing this? <laughs> what, what, how, what is it? I've never seen anything like this. And at that point, he's a very generous guy. He's very open, open source kind of fellow. And I found, I don't remember where it was, one of his project files from Cinema 4D online. And I downloaded it and opened it. And there was some missing plugins. And one of them was something called Octane Renderer, which was what cracked open me really jumping into 3D. So in 2018, I really was like inspired by his everydays, which He's posted an image every day for 15 years. So he has 6,000 images. So I said, let me do this for a year and see how far I get. And about 100 days in, I was like, wow, I'm really good at this because my filmmaking background lent itself because 3D is very much about creating the physics of the real world. So if you understand cameras and lighting and color and all of that, you're already ahead of the game. 
So I was just posting every day for fun. And then that community was so tight knit. We would support each other. And we were just doing it because we loved it, right? We're like, man, look at your render. Look what I did. And I was expressing myself in a really beautiful way. And then in 2019, he the NFT thing popped up and we were all like, what, you can make money doing this? <laughs> we were just doing it because we loved it, you know? So Mike, obviously, just like everything else, led the way on that. And I started to understand what a non-fungible token was. And then I really started digging into Web3 and crypto and got more excited just of the philosophy of what it was going to mean for us as a society. Right. And that's when I decided to say, all right, let me, let me shift into this. This feels really good. And the fact that it showed up first in the arts, you know, this new way of doing energy exchange is in the arts first. Right. I was like, I'm all in, you know, I was like, I want to be a part of this. And that's when I kind of jumped in. And now it's all I want to do is make NFT. So all my music, all my art, everything is being built in these little quantum packages of energy is what I call them. I get to make these little worlds and yeah. put them on the blockchain, you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, that, it's that's so thing. great to hear that you also understand the, uh, the philosophy of what we're trying to do on the blockchain, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I'm a, I'm a philosopher. Most of my work is uh, all my learnings from the things I've learned. I've studied, uh, you know, theology, I've studied some bit of quantum mechanics and, and like I started to gather all this information and, and the blockchain is like the crystallization of this new way of, of entering, I believe, like the golden age. It can be like a new, like Egypt was 3,500 years ago. It really yeah. could be plentiful and abundant and a wonderful way to exist and so I, i'm most excited about that i love finances i love money i love i want to be wealthy but i'm more excited that there's this could be a benevolent way to make wealth a, a new way to share and be more uh democratic you know, yeah financial and, and i think i mean I, i've spoken about this on the show before i think just extracting money from government will change society tremendously absolutely um, and, and that's one of the projects that I'm actually launching here in the next couple of weeks. I have my own NFT Web3 marketplace that I've been building for about a year and a half. So essentially my own OpenSea. Um, and it's called The Grandmothership. And uh, it's, it's, it's not up yet, so I, or I would show it to you. <laughs> but this is, uh, but I am right in, in thinking that uh, this is the website that's kind of leading into that, right? Is this? Well, this is a different project. So yeah, this AOI, we can start with AOI. Yeah. Yeah. I was only getting into the other one because it was about uh, sharing of wealth, but this is too, this is an educational um, NFT series that I've created called Art Official Intelligence or AOI. Um, AOI is uh, essentially a, a story about a robot named Adam, A-T-O-M, and he is having an awakening. He's a robot in the metaverse, and a lot of what you'll see him doing is praying. His hands will be in a praying well, who is the robot praying to if, if he's a robot? Well, his creator. Well, who's his creator? Well, that's me. Right. What does that mean? That's very meta, right? Am I, if I, am I his God? Well, who's my God? So as he's having these awakenings, he's finding new tech, new pieces for his body. And every time he does, it opens a masterclass. So these are the first four passes. And with this comes a masterclass in three, the philosophy of 3D design. Wow. I released my first two modules on my Discord. There'll be about eight of them. And what I'm doing first is teaching people how to use something called Unreal Engine. It's, mm. a, it's a free software that Epic Games puts out, but it's the future of what I believe to be building the new world on the metaverse. So I thought, well, how's a way that <clears throat> I'm not just going to do a money grab. I see a lot of that. And I wanted to contrast some of the gold rush stuff that people are doing with something a little more sustainable. And I think a real way to sustain is teaching people how to build the future. So right. we currently have about 120 students that are, are learning Unreal Engine. And it's going to be a series that goes for however long it takes. And every time Adam finds a new piece of tech, we open up a new masterclass. We'll open mm -hmm. up Cinema 4D. And so right now it's, it's Unreal Engine. And that's music and animation, episodic storytelling, all in the NFT, you know, bucket if you will amazing let's yeah. take a look at uh let's take a look at one of the uh one of the pieces that you've done artistically this is on your instagram yes uh, 
So who who is singing in that? Is that you or no. I think you said? Go ahead. Who, who's yeah, that, they're called the Huni Kuin. This is a, a, a great segue into what I was actually talking about before. Uh, the Huni Kuin are a tribe in the, the middle of the Amazon in Brazil. Uh, they're the indigenous kind of uh, earth guardians of the world. They live in the, the heart of our whole world right there in the Amazonian jungle. Um, and that one there specifically, I was helping raise money for their village. Uh, because they had really bad flooding, about 70% of their village flooded. So I created that image and pointed people to uh, a place. We raised about $10,000 just here in um, in California. Um, and yeah, their part, I have a, like I was saying, an NFT marketplace built on Ethereum Web3 called the Grandmothership. And what I'm doing is uh, collaborating with indigenous tribes all over the world. And what I'm doing is taking their artwork, remixing it, remixing their music, but then also getting them on the blockchain. So the Huni Kuin tribe will now have their own wallet set up. These people who live in the middle of the jungle, that way they're not left behind in the new socioeconomic movement moving forward. And we have one in Africa. We're doing one in Ethiopia, South America. Um, yeah, very, very excited about that. So now, so that's grandmothership. Is there yeah, a way for us to, to access that? That, that will be launching in the next 10 days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, I don't and, have a website up yet. And so it's primarily for uh, um, like you, you have projects in Africa, Brazil, and South South America. Yep. Uh, these are for the tribes. Can can you know can people outside of the tribes get involved? And oh so yeah, well what we're doing is we're so I'm making NFTs. So essentially, the one in Africa, we worked with an artist in Lagos, and he made a bunch of images. And then we made a, an entire Afrobeat project. I work with all of Erica Badu's people, her drummer. Mm -hmm. So we made a, an album that goes with those images. And when you buy those NFTs, a lion's share of those profits go to Joseph Obanubi, an artist right there in Nigeria. And so when we do the Huni Kuin, you buy the Huni Kuin ones, 50% of that wallet goes straight, straight to the tribe. So it's a philanthropic collaboration with different people that may not have access to the blockchain, may not be able to, to, to do that and have amazing art. And we're like celebrating their cultures and stuff at the same time, yeah. Uh, was that flooding that happened in that village, was that due to global warming? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It was just really bad rain rain season. And they, I mean, I have, there's pictures even on that post, the kids are all underwater and all the houses were underwater. <clears throat> That's just one of the many things. There's a lot, a lot of stuff going on in the government there in Brazil. Yeah. They're trying to take their land. You know, yeah. and these are the people that, these are the most Brazilian people on the planet, right? right. So there are, I mean, these uh, indigenous people will be up there at the courthouse with their feathers, you know, like, don't take our land. Like, you know, and, and really the scary part is, is if they, you know, clear that part of the forest, man, that's like, some of the last bit of the rainforest that's really been preserved is where these people live. So this stuff's all connected. I oh, believe yeah. that's what crypto is here to do. And, and the blockchain is like remind us how we're supposed to be humaning, you know? Yeah. And then the, the art of official intelligence, that's what we just saw. That's with so, access. Yeah. So that's actually, platform. that yeah. that's more of like a, a step-by-step -step class of how to learn three-dimensional like design right. right that's right exactly yep so that's a way for me to empower creatives Our, my moniker for that is that you know there's a lot of consumers right and consumption has gotten us kind of in a pickle mm. i want to help create creators the more people that are acting out some some sort of creative thing they're contributing right so if i can teach them how to use 3d and this the one of the the, the one of my students wants to build um, I like something to help with domestic violence. She wants to build kind of a VR experience for kids who are going through domestic violence. So to teach kids how to deal with the trauma of being involved in familial violence through VR and stuff. That's the stuff I'm most excited about. You know, someone doing our, you know, some sort of therapy or some uh, new way of teaching via those, those modules. So yeah, it's all very. I want to. I want to empower folks at this while making money. By the way, so I, I, I do want to turn a profit. <laughs> but yeah, the core of it is. I, I think we can do both. I don't think they have to be diametrically opposed. I think there's a, you can become very wealthy while also being you know benevolent at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that you know 
I think that there's a right way to do things and it doesn't have to be all centered and focused on greed, right? It can be done in a harmonious way where we, where you benefit and the students benefit and the tribes benefit. And I think that, you know, blockchain is the answer. It is. It absolutely is. So let's, uh, let's, so I just want to go back for a second. Now that auction, uh, it was successful. Did, did it, do you remember what it sold for? What, what yeah, the event yeah. sold? The what NFT was that? in the car sold for $1.4 million. Oh, that's amazing. So that oh, was that's... very, and now Sotheby's, uh, I'm going to be working with them more in the future. Uh, that was amazing. I couldn't believe it. They, they were projecting that it would sell for about 800,000. So it sold for a lot more. And at the end, when they when the gavel dropped, uh, this film crew ran up to me and they're like, you're the artist, right? I'm like, yeah. They're like, well, here's the guy who just bought it. And he told me he bought it for the NFT. The car was an afterthought. That it was more about owning the first NFT connected to an automobile. He didn't really care what automobile it was. It was the NFT. And I was like, wow, we've arrived. <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the, and then a few weeks after that, uh, CryptoPunks sold at Sotheby's. So it's like, just happened like that and to be yeah. there first was a was a really amazing experience man. oh that's amazing that's super exciting and congratulations yeah. that's great you, knowing that he bought he bought he really did the auction for the nft that's not right for the that's right i felt pretty good after that i was like yeah that's awesome so we've got a um we've got a po app for our uh for our regular audience uh we've got a po app for those of you who don't know uh what a po app is it is an nft it's on the, uh, you can go, if you have a, an iPhone, you can download the POAP app and it's going to ask you for a secret word. That secret word, very simply, is Jeremy, uh, J-E-R-E-M-Y. I got that right, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you will get that, that NFT. You will get that in the POAP app. And then what you want to do is you want to go over here. I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So you're going to go over to poap.fun forward slash raffle forward slash 1359. And you're going to be able to come in here and join the raffle. You can't join if you don't have the POAP. The POAP is very specific for the raffle. So you go in here. Once you have your POAP, you're able to get into the raffle. And then we will choose the winners on uh, next Monday during the show. If we don't have a show next Monday, which is something I'm going to talk about in a second, uh, you will we will have it the following week. This has been great, Jeremy. Is there anything else that you would like to add to the interview? Uh, everyone I, I talked to, people, part of why I wanted to teach folks was that, you know, when I talk to people about creativity, I hear a lot of people say I'm not creative. You hear a lot of people say that. And uh, I just want to say, no, everybody's creative and there's ways to uh, make a living that involve you being creative and not just feeling stuck uh, trying to make someone else money. I would say that we're in a really exciting time right now and there's a lot of opportunity and to tap into your creativity. You know, we all wanted to sing and dance and draw when we were younger. And uh, I think it's time to sing and dance and draw again and make a bunch of money doing it. So yeah. absolutely. We have yeah. to come to creativity with childlike sensibility. Right. That's right. Absolutely. Well, it was absolutely great having you on the show, Jeremy. I know you're up super early. I yeah. really appreciate this. Thank you so much. We'll talk Thank after you. the show. I'll text you. Okay. Uh, this has been great. It was great Thank having you, so you on the much. show. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Take care. Good morning, Florian. Good morning. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Pretty good interview there, right? Yeah, it was really nice. It was really nice. Yeah. He's a very nice guy, and it seems like he's doing some amazing things on the blockchain. Is it something different and special? Uh, it's yeah. something that you probably understood better than me. That's why I kind of let let you take the lead on that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I I think uh, I think what he's doing with the um, with the tribes and the wallets is is very interesting. I think that that's it's super cool, and I think what he's doing with the students is really great. I think more people need to learn three dimensional design. So uh, you should probably take that class. I know you want to do uh, up your creative skills so uh you could do that yeah, hey uh, really how's cool. the um how's the uh the the what uh, you know i keep saying usl open cup but is that is it usl is it usl no it's a us open cup 
So it's the U.S. Open Cup. So are there MLS teams that you will eventually go up against, or is it all USL? How does that work? Uh, the U.S. Open Cup is a cup uh, across America for all the teams, all the soccer teams, and it starts with being regional first. And so we played our first game last week against another Miami team, uh, and we won. And next, we're playing Inter Miami. Oh, so so Inter Miami is an MLS team, right? Uh, Inter Miami is uh, MLS. We are USL, so you 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 can play any teams across like different leagues. And then also because it's the Americas, it's it's Americas. It there are some uh, South American teams that you're eventually going to play as well. No, no, it's only the U.S. It's the ah. U.S. Open Cup. That's why it's called like that. I think but Red Bull did fairly well one year. I can't remember. Yeah, they, they lost in the final, in, I think, in 2017. Ah, 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 ah. See, yeah, you've got all the soccer memory. I've got, you know, I just go to the games and I sit there and I just enjoy the game. You actually know the game and know all the scores. Oh, yeah, the AC Milan who are partnering with BeatMax. Yes. Uh, yeah, so they're basically partnering with this company to... Uh, um, unveil uh like i think it's a 3d nft um like it's a it's a special jersey for this club but well, the club is known as the rossoneri so it's like it's how the, the the club is called so they kind of like are creating a limited edition of 3d nft and then um it's from south sudan and the proceed will be directed to support a nonprofit organization, uh, Fondazione Milan. And it will also include help to alleviate the humanitarian crisis in the war torn Ukraine. And there is, I think there's the supplies like seven, a little bit more than 75,000 pieces. Uh, and it will be available starting on April 14th. Nice. And uh, we also have a UFC partnership going on. Yeah, I saw that too. Uh, the UFC partnered with uh, Crypto.com, one of the biggest platform for uh, for trading, like crypto, selling, buying. Um, and apparently, I think it seems like, as it says on the article right there, it's like a fan bonus of the night. So meaning like the top three fighters will receive compensation in, in, in crypto, in Bitcoin, I think. Uh, the first one will get 30,000 worth of Bitcoin for thirty thousand dollars worth of bitcoin the second twenty thousand and, and the last one ten thousand so pretty That's interesting really how, how those teams are kind of like um creating partnership with, with those uh crypto crypto wallets and, and crypto like trading platforms uh, we've seen a lot of teams already having sponsorship um and sports like for example f1 who's already partnered with with crypto.com uh so it's becoming more and more popular uh, in, in the sport industry yeah i think you know every week i'm always searching for uh athletic or you know sports related nfts and i'm never disappointed i'm always able to find at least two news stories it's it's funny how we started the nft world on the art and now we're moving to sports hopefully we move to science and and all of that you know every other industry as well so florian we wanted to talk about uh we always do our segment what's in your wallet uh i was hoping you could first of all explain to me what is going on with the Gary V project? I, uh, so, so interesting. I didn't realize when you said to me, go in and see, go to this friends list checker and see if you're on the white list. I just assumed that everybody who had uh, a V friend was on the white list. And then I found out that's not actually true that you're on the white list. I wound up on the white list. Our good friend Eric Rhodes is on the white list. But then Eric told me, he said, it has nothing to do with the number of NFTs that you hold from V Friends. It, it's not everybody. There are some people that have 30 V Friends and they didn't get on the list for one reason or another. What, what, what's actually happening here? Because when you told me to go in and check my check this, and then I was like, oh yeah, I got in. I didn't pay any attention. I closed out the, the tab. I just didn't pay any attention to it anymore. 
what, how did you even find out about this? I guess you're in the Discord, right? I am. I am in the Discord. Um, I kind of follow from far because with, with this NFT project, you if you have to be involved like almost twenty four seven. He's doing amazing, amazing things for his community. You can see the the V friends, um, the V ones are like going for I think it's like fifteen ETH minimum or ten ETH minimum. So. I'm just like falling from far. And then there was one announcement about the release of the V2 um, and the supply and how we could get it. And being a book game holder, uh, we had the, the, the opportunity to be widely whitelisted, like on the friends list, uh, because I think there's limited supply. Uh, I don't know how much. I think it's, I don't know. I don't want to say anything stupid, but not everybody can have access to it um and so it was worth checking out and when i followed the steps to see if i was friend listed i was lucky enough to be to be one of them um and i immediately told you to do the same because you never know like maybe maybe it could be it could be interesting to 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 mint the the second version as the first one did a lot of uh noises in the nft space um he's offering a lot of utility especially being able to um meet him or be have access to the vcon or even other interesting utilities um and, and to be honest like i think it'll be definitely worth it uh the book game was worth it the v2 will be worth it because i think it's the the, the 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 price i'm assuming i think i've seen it, it's like around 900 dollars um so See, in my you, opinion, it's, it you, seemed you think that's really where it's going to come in you think it's going to be almost i think point. i think that's what he, he said but i think it it's definitely worth it because it's a Gary V NFT and, and with everything that he has going on and everything he's doing for the space, I think it's, it's a totally fair price. Okay. I guess I'm going to have to sell some of my Cardano. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to get prepared. Do you know when this goes on sale? Uh, I think it's soon. I think it's a mid April. And I think we have as book came older we have 20, 20, 12.5 days to mint or something oh. or to claim or to, yeah, to mint. Okay. Um, you're you're going to promise I'm... me, you're going to promise me that you're going to send me a text saying that it's ready to mint, right? Because I am <laughs> oh, not paying attention to this at all. I've got, you know, we've got other projects that we're going to talk about. Uh, it, so as soon as you know that it's available to mint, and that's great that it's, we're going to have 12 days because I need to move some funds around to make this purchase. Do you yeah. know if we're going to, so is it one for one? We got in, so we get one V friend. Is, is that how that's going to work? To be completely honest with you, like last week, I've kind of like kind of stepped away from, from the, the, the whole space because it's a bit overwhelming. Um, a lot of info and a lot of things going on uh, outside, outside of this, uh, for me, uh, but I'll definitely take a look this week and I'll let you know, we can talk about it next week, but, okay. uh, the, there's going to be a bunch of information coming down soon. I think. Good, 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 good. Okay. So you'll keep me up to date with that. That's great. Well, the, hopefully that was a great purchase. Um, your metaverse players, did that go where, where's that ha happening? What's happening with all that? The drop as in, uh, I, I don't know when the, the actual, uh, minting day is um as i said last week i've been a bit away from everything so i'm kind of like catching up this morning um but it hasn't it hasn't dropped yet but there's a lot of uh, a lot of excitement behind this the, the, the specific project um as you can see the art is, is pretty cool uh the 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 artist is well known in, in, in this industry and especially in the comic book industry. Um, and the fact that it's tied up to uh, Royal Society of Players is, is pretty awesome too. Yeah, I took a look at, uh, at that artist's other work and it's so, uh, so focused and, and designed specifically, you know, you know, sometimes you get these artists that can kind of do anything, but then you have artists that like, you can walk in the mall and you immediately know that it's a Peter Lick or it's a, you know, a Jasper John, or it's a, you know, you automatically know. And he has such a distinct style. I was able to kind of look at his stuff and then I could see other things immediately that were definitely his style. Uh, very, very cool. I, I think that's going to be a great purchase for you. I, I really, now that I've gotten more information about it, I really like how that's going. Hey, um, 
you know, I don't, I, I, we can, we can, you know, walk on eggshells here, but I, I kind of wanted to talk about the Tyler Adams NFT, but if you don't want to do it and like, you know, we don't have to talk about it. Um, you, you can, I haven't really like, I've just, I haven't really dig, digged in into it. Um, I've just seen what he, he what was be, being sold on, on the marketplace on OpenSea. Um, yeah, well, I he only it's... sold two. And so I, you know, it, you know, this is kind of what I, and we can stop this conversation at any point because I know that he was, a, he's a teammate, you know, former teammate. Um, I'm just, I'm just kind of, curious as to like how this project came about um did somebody approach him and said hey we're gonna do all this stuff and he just kind of nodded and said yes because he didn't even really promote this until the actual day of i mean these look beautiful they look amazing um you know the utility is okay um but i'm i'm a little bit surprised that it wasn't uh, promoted more. And I think it also kind of speaks volumes to like, you know, I, you know, individual artists, individual athletes producing their own NFTs when they're not at the level of a Cristiano Ronaldo or a, or a Messi or somebody like that. You know, I know that you've wanted to produce an NFT project and we'll probably do that, you know, either this year or next year. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, look, what I always say to people when they come to me and say, I want to do an NFT project, I say, okay, well, how many followers do you have on Instagram? And then we have to say 2% of 2%, right? 2% marketing rule means that you're going to market to people and 2% of them are immediately going to buy. Now with the NFTs, because people aren't, you know, the adoption rate is early adopters right now, those 2% don't necessarily transfer to people that immediately understand and know how to purchase an NFT. So you have to have a very, very wide base of followers to be able to have a successful launch. And, you know, I'm just, I'm a little surprised that, you know, first of all, this was done. And then the fact that it really wasn't marketed and promoted well, I'm just, I'm just curious. Well, I think you took, I don't know how everything went down, but I think you took, there's two different types of NFTs. There's the one that just the art and collectible of it. And then there's one where you purchase and you expect utility in the back. In, like once you purchase the NFT. Uh, and we've seen a lot of, well, not a lot, but a bunch of athletes and, and celebrities just launch an NFT and just leave it there because they didn't think how much work it was um probably uh, it seems that he doesn't know much about the space um from the outside it seems like it because it's not really thought through especially in a, on the marketing side um dropping uh an announcement the day before uh when you see all the projects just working on that for weeks um so i don't know what's behind it i don't know what's the whole thing about it, but it's, it's, it's cool to see more and more athletes getting into it. Yeah. So well, we would love to, have, we would love to have Tyler on, uh, to help promote it and, and get all that, uh, going. Um, you know, I, I, I think it would be great to talk to him and, and see, you know, what it is. I, I think, listen, I mean, when you said to me, Tyler's, uh, NFT is launching, this was, I think last week, it was launching today and I hadn't heard about it at all. I follow him on Instagram. I follow him on Twitter. Um, you know, I, I was just shocked. So I, I wasn't surprised to see that the NFTs didn't move. I think that what, you know, I would advise him that he shouldn't just push this away into the back and never, you know, focus on this again. I think that there's a way to market this um, and, and he just needs a good marketing team behind him. Uh, so I wanted to kind of update you on, well, first of all, I think we should talk about Boonji, right? Okay. So Boonji is doing a four for one. Uh, let's get, let's get Boonji up here. I'll show everybody. Florian and I are both invested in the Boonji project. Um, I'm, I'm satisfied with the art. Um, you know, Every once in a while, I go in and I look at my 
of what I own. And, you know, some stuff gets me super excited and some stuff doesn't. Uh, and of course, you know, your interest in an art piece kind of wanes over time. And I'm not, I, I think I expected more out of the Boonji project than what we're actually currently seeing, right? We've got 11,000 items, 5,000 owners, the floor price is at 0.13. Um, you know, the artwork, you know, well, actually, that's even better than the one that I have, isn't it? Wow, I feel like selling mine and buying this one now. This is kick ass. Wow, which, which what, are, what are you ranked? uh what am i ranked uh i'd have to i'd have to go in and, and research that um right so this is at the bottom of the rankings but still i mean visually see i have the sneaker um and i've got uh something else um <clears throat> but i'm just so so what they're doing is for people who own four of these bonjis they can convert those four into one giant Bonji, and you're able what you're able to do is go down the list so if we go in here and we look at this guy um <clears throat> we'll see the uh we see that the background is jelly the body is stinna the ear is visions the visor is meadow and so if you have these four you're actually able to tell Bonji, tell, tell the artist um, hey, I want to keep the body of this one. I want to keep the ear of this other one, keep the visor of this third one. And then they bring all that in and they create this super bonji. And then that's going to include the IP rights. Um, I think it's interesting because I think obviously what they're trying to do, uh, I mean, it's very obvious what they're trying to do is reduce the number of, of pieces that are in there. If you say, okay, you know, Look, half of, half of the people that own it, so if there's 11,000 pieces and 5,000 people own one Bonji, then there actually aren't that many people that own four Bonjis. So this is, on the first side, a lot of, a good way for somebody who's interested in getting the bigger Bonji, if they only own two, to maybe invest in two others, then those four get burnt, and then they wind up with a bigger Bonji. Um so there's, they're going to reduce the number of these smaller pieces, uh, and then they're going to allow IP rights for these bigger ones. I just, you know, I just wonder about, and I wonder about this for all of the NFT projects, right? What is the life of this project? Where is this project going to be in 10 years? I think a lot of people, we talked about this before on the show, a lot of people who created these NFT projects didn't understand that this is a business. This is a business that is now going to run for the life of this NFT, which is basically forever. You have to continue providing value. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm kind of getting a little um, impatient. And I know, believe me, I'm the person who should be the most patient because I understand what it takes to, you know, for Panda Dynasty to create a video game or for, you know, Banji to, to create these statues, uh, you know, all of that. I understand the time that it takes, but... I don't know. I'm I'm expecting a little bit more from the Bonji project. What it's, about you? Yeah, I think it's 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 really hard to expect more as, as like that quick. Um, Bonji is a name behind the project, which is uh, Brandon Murphy is a is an international artist, um, and I think they've been trying really hard because I think it's their their collection is probably not value as it should be. Um, they had a hard time getting recognized on the open sea market. They, they're, they're, their floor dropped. Um, I think if we remember correctly, why at least people minted for 0.2 and then it was a Dutch auction uh, for the rest of them. Um, but there is a lot of value getting back to the community, which is the physical art that are being sent to some of the holders. Um, they, partner with Rolex to create a, a unique watch that I was uh, that I was ruffled out to to NFT holders as well um, I think I'm keeping mine because I think I've seen in the long term I really love the art uh, I'm hoping that I'll be a lucky winner of one of Brandon Murphy's physical art uh, I 
could buy three to do to do to to burn the four and because only own one and 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 get and get the bigger one but right now i don't have the funds and and as i said i'm trying to not to like step away from the space but take a little bit of like step back to look up what's going on because it's uh, there's a lot of things going on a lot of money being spent from everybody a lot of rock pools but i i, I still really like this project it's one of the first projects i've bought into um and I do believe in, in, in this artist. So we have to be patient because this, this, this space is still super young. Um, the, the, those project knows they want to stay there for the next five, 10 years, especially for example, when we talked to Panda Dynasty and Gabriel, he told us that he's, he wants this, his project to, to be alive in the next five, 10 years. Um, so there's a lot of things that they have to do and it doesn't happen overnight. So. I'll try to be patient. I know it's hard. You, will, you always want to get value back as quick as possible. But I think on, on some of those projects, when the artist is behind, like there's a big artist behind it, he puts his name and his face on the project. Or there's a guy like Gabriel who kind of like Panda Dynasty who, who, who quit his job just to do his project full time. It shows you the dedication of those people. So I think we have to be patient and, and be understanding of what they're trying to do. I, uh, that's, uh, that, so what you're saying is that if you had the money and you had the time, you would buy the other three bungees to convert it to this giant bungee with the IP. Yeah, the time I have it, it just needs like four clicks and that's it. Um, but yeah, the money is more like, am I willing to spend another 0. 0.5 on this? Um, 0. 0.5 is a lot of money. Uh, yeah, so especially, especially when we had the VFriends project coming up. We yes. got to lay out $900 for that. And you're not going to lay out another $900 for the Bungie project. But if it was done at different times and we had more cash flow, <laughs> you would do that. I, I'm not sure if I would do that. I actually think that there may be an advantage to holding the smaller Bungies uh, because now it's going to reduce the number and hopefully increase the floor value. Let's see. Let's see how that goes. I don't know when that's happening, but um, I'm really curious to see if it's, if it's going to happen. I, I think it is currently happening. I, I think that if you do have the floor, you can, there's a whole process on the Discord where you go in and you uh, talk to Brendan and, and you tell him what pieces, uh, what, um, uh, you know, what, what aspects you want to hold on to for the larger Boonji. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get more information on that as, as we, uh, as, as the days goes on. What are you, what's, uh, what's on the market for blue checks? Do you know uh, what's their new purchase? Uh, not really. We had, um, well, I, I minted my Walder football. Um, well, you did, I did mint my two Walder football, uh, NFTs. Um, did they sell and, out? Uh, so what they're doing is like, they are selling, they're selling 1111, like 1111, uh nfts so it's different phases like that there's five because the supply is five 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 thousand five hundred and fifty five oh. um i haven't checked where it is now i think it's like two thousand people minted or oh, there's two thousand two thousand nfts uh they i think because i haven't followed all the news but i think they've they, they purchased or they are about to purchase a team called uh for for jays for jsc it's like in portugal um, I don't know which tier it, it, it is, but it's pretty interesting to like owning two NFTs and being part of the decision-making in the process of acquiring a, a, a real football team. Uh, they are dropping, they dropped the male version of the NFT. They are about to drop, seems like they're going to drop the female version uh, to include also like female athletes and, 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 and I think it's it's pretty interesting and pretty exciting. I don't think uh, he has the right. Um, I don't think there's enough people knowing about this project because it, it's kind of like giving you real utility because you kind of owning a piece of 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 a real football team. So for me, kind of like mixing both my passion football and then and and then having a. a and then, and then mixing it with NFTs is, is pretty incredible. Uh, that's the only the reason why. I, I meant it because, and, and the art is cool too, but I think it, it's uh, it, it's giving you a different utility, a different perspective, and then like 
joining both like real life and then and then digital life is pretty awesome this is the world of football uh website um, okay oh, the, there we go the nft that i minted uh i think last week uh, in uh, so this is uh the, the project that actually bought um uh, a fourth division team in portugal so basically people that mint this NFT will be part owner of the club and will have a say in the decision that, that, that are happening. Uh, <clears throat> so they are releasing 5,555 uh, NFT male version of like soccer players. Um, there'll be another drop uh, of another 5,555 of the women version as well. Uh, <clears throat> but this is actually legit because they already bought the they already bought the, the the team in Portugal, which is called oh, I said it earlier. It's I don't know what he's saying in, in Portuguese, but it's for jazz F O R J A E S S C. And uh, and yeah, it's I think it's super interesting to as I said earlier to like mix and bridge and bridge like physical and digital world by is owning this this NFT. Is this is the OG captains what you purchased, or did you purchase one of these gold? You didn't purchase gold captain for two. No, the gold the gold is I think is uh, uh, I don't know if it's I think there's one at the reveal, but I think you can buy. I think they they were all purchased before the OG came out. But the OG is what you bought. Yes, I bought the OG, uh, and I, I checked earlier. It's only like three hundred and fifty minted so far but you can see all the utilities behind it. Uh, everything is soccer related. So if you really love soccer and then you got it, you're just getting into the space, this is a really, really interesting and, and, and legit project that I would definitely not advise you to buy, but like get a look, do your own research. Um, it's not every day that you, can, you have those kind of like utility being given to the holder. So it's something I really want to talk about because it's something I'm really, excited about for the future uh i think it's super cool to be a part owner of an, uh, a soccer team so and I, I know we we've talked about it like in the past uh you mentioned how uh, some guys like on youtube wanted to buy a professional sports team um so i think it's pretty cool it's funny so i connected the uh my wallet in the hopes that i would now be able to see the number that have been minted uh i'm gonna refresh this to see if maybe it'll come in again uh first of all the artwork looks amazing i love the artwork oh so 341 of the 1111 have already been minted how much what's the cost on this uh point 19 so 0.19 so that's that's about 400 dollars, 500 dollars no uh 600 oh it's 600 dollars. okay wow uh well that's we would love to have them on the show also if they wanted to chat uh it looks like a great first of all the artwork's amazing uh this women of football let's just take a look at that that's their next thing that they're releasing but i guess they're gonna sell out of the og first everybody's doxxed or oh i see it's Powered yes. by World of Football NFT Collection, empowering women through sports equal pay. He's so the, the, the people behind it are actual people in the sports industry, agents um, and, and other people. So we had uh, with Blue Check, we had a, uh, a Twitter space with them and where they explained what they were going to do and how enthusiastic they were about it um that kind of sold me uh they were really passionate and really trying to do the best um job possible to launch their nft the right way and and make it like uh survive that 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 craziness that's happening in, in the nft space and and i do truly believe in this project so that's why i'm into my i'm into two two nfts oh wow oh you spent spent twelve hundred dollars on on these. Yeah, that's awesome. Percentage percentage of all profits from every WOF collection will go towards powering the investment of the of a Portuguese fourth division club previously identified, and that's that's the club that you talked about. Yes, 
And are there, so uh, upon fulfilling the investment uh, world of football experience team, possessing more than 20 years of experience in professional football management, will begin running the club on all aspects from the technical side all the way to marketing and sponsorship. Do you know what division that Portuguese team? Oh, it's the fourth division. Fourth Sorry. division, yeah. Okay, so it's the fourth division. So it is. Uh, does um, does Portuguese soccer run the same way that European soccer does? Do they fall off at the end? Uh, yeah, there there's promotion and relegation. League? So there's uh, that that that's why that's exciting because I think it's one of the lowest professional tiers in Portuguese football. Yeah, and so there's a lot of. Uh, upside to it meaning like if we do a good job and we can we have the potential of being promoted in the next few years and why not i think the goal is to bring a team like that to 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 the front and 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 put them under the light in the first division so that would be super exciting that to see that in like 10 years of now or maybe 15 because it takes a lot of time and, and dedication to build a team and then build it the right way yeah, there are a couple of guys uh, in the uh, blockchain Bitcoin world that have purchased uh, soccer teams. Oh, here you are. Oh, you're right yeah, there. Oh, there you go. Oh, with the with the um, blue check uh, guys. So th this is heavily supported by the blue checks. Yes. Well, I think I've, I've seen him play before. Uh, and you've got uh, Christina Birkenrode. We got to get. Oh, and uh, Maikla uh, Moore. I, I ruined that name, didn't I? <laughs> we've got to get a couple more women in here uh to, to yeah, be supportive that, that would be great that would this, be awesome. is, this is great that you guys uh all kind of are supporting this project it's you yahoo finance and fox business mentions that's very cool yeah no we'll definitely talk a lot more about that project uh and we'll, we'll focus on that project you know as we uh continue I wanted to tell you a great story. Um, I hope that you don't get jealous when you see it. Um, but remember my uh, Wabasuki story where uh, I wanted to, there was one specific Wabasuki that I wanted to purchase. For those of you uh, in the audience who, who don't remember this story, I'll repeat it again. So I had decided that I was going to purchase a Wabasuki. And I went on. Now, what I did was, I looked for the rarest of rare. I looked for the Wabasuki that had the most, the, the rarest aspects in them that, you know, you could find. And I found this one and I went to bed. I didn't really think about it. It was on sale for, I think, 0.1 at the time. And then something had changed where uh, the price had dropped to like 0.02. And I moved money into my wallet. And by the time that I moved money into my wallet, this was early in the morning. This was like seven o'clock in the morning, even five o'clock in the morning before the show. Uh, somebody grabbed it. And I was so incredibly disappointed. Uh, but then I, I found them on Twitter. I messaged them on Twitter. I said, hey, you, you beat me to it like within minutes. If you ever think about selling it again, I'm the guy I want to buy this. And I got a message last week about like the, the guy contacted me. He was like, hey, you know, uh, you know, financial changes. And I understand that completely. He probably has to buy a V friends also. So he's selling some stuff. He's like, would you buy this for, you know, 0 0.025? And I was like, yes, do a private sale. I will buy it immediately. I don't care about the gas prices. I was like, I just didn't care. I was like, I wanted this. So uh, I was super happy with it. I'm going to share it with you now. Uh, I think you're going to be, uh, you know, well, I'm curious as to what your reaction is going to be. So that is my Wabasuki. That's pretty cool. The Pikachu one. It's got the Pikachu on it. You know, you're a big Pikachu guy. You're a Pokemon guy. I am not. Uh, but this has the rarest aspects. When we go in, so first of all, he's got the, the gold tooth. I love that. Uh, he's got super bright red hair. He's got the glasses. I mean, I just love this guy. I think he is just the most amazing thing. Now, I want to show you when I'm talking about uh, the properties. So the T-shirt Pikachu, Pika, how do you, Pika? What does it say? Pikachu. Pika, Pika, but it should be Pikachu, right? It should Pikachu, say Pikachu. Right. Uh, that's at 2%. Only 2% had that trait. Uh, square sunglasses, only 1% had that trait. 
Ivy League is, you know, the hair. Only 3% have that trait. And a super smile with, I think it says gold tooth, um, is 2% trait. There, there's no other Wabasuki that has this many properties that have this low percentages. So I bought it for that. I also just, I love this design. I think it's super, uh, I, I just love it. It's, it's just my favorite. It's different for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we went into the gold tooth. How many others have the gold tooth? Uh, oh, he's got a, oh, a couple of those guys have gold tooth. Oh, that's the four of them. Okay. So that's great. Plus the one that I have. So that's awesome. Yeah. I just absolutely, I love that guy. I'm so, I can't, like, I can't tell you like how, you know, it's so ridiculous. It's like, uh, you know, comic book collecting when you get Spider-Man 300 and you're like, holy mackerel, I can't believe I bought this for a hundred dollars. And you know that like the investment is going to be so much well worth it. I just, I can't wait till, so, you know, if I resituate or if I'm in another place, I plan to buy all of these um, frames that show the NFTs. I can't wait to decorate my house. The Wabasuki is going to be like, prominent it's going to be incredible i love it <laughs> that's pretty cool i really like the the t-shirt yeah right yeah you would buy it just for the t-shirt i knew that yeah. i knew you were going to be like uh i wish i had that t-shirt <laughs> and of course you know the wabby punks are doing really you know well they 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 did all that that artist i really think he's awesome so uh, i'm super happy with that purchase so did you buy any post sex or post uh post chain or whatever, I don't know what it is, but the token. I'll show you what I did. Um, so if I change this to pulse, what's interesting is that right now we're in the test net, right? So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna change to the pulse X test net. And what I did is, so I have now uh, 59,000, there's a YouTuber who was like, hey, if you're watching this and you want some TPLS, I've got you know multiple billions, I don't know how he wound up with multiple billions, but he was like, hey, I'll, I'll give everybody some comment in the, you know, comment away. So I'm waiting for my, you know, for more of this, but I have almost 60,000 um, TPS, TPLS. I have the 2.1 million PLS. Okay, so originally, as soon as it started, I, this is all test net, right? So here's the thing. These numbers may mean nothing or they may mean like, something really incredible so this is this already finished these pools are no longer available but because i invested i think 1.2 million i staked plsx i then got prt and then that prt is this number here uh i think i got what like uh 20 of those or something like that uh 537 prt then I did another, I farmed some of the um, uh, PLSX and that gave me 55, uh, almost 56 INC. Now they're saying that PRT is only for test net and it's not going to mean anything. And that ink is going to be a very small coin. But then what I did was I took, right, I think I took a million of my PLSX and I converted it to 179 almost hex. But here's the thing. We don't know if these transactions are going to correlate to when it goes to the mainnet. This is all just stuff that I'm having fun with on the pulse chain test net, but yeah. it's possible that it's possible that Richard Hart is going to say, okay, anybody who converted PLSX into TPLS or into HEX or into all this, we're going to let you hold those coins. We're going to move them into the main net. And then I'm going to have a lot of different coins. What's interesting now is they've integrated the Ethereum test net into the, um, uh, into the pulse chain uh, test net. So you can take your pulse. This is now this level is all like, developer shit right this is all you know you have to know what you're doing in order to you know do this but i guess you can get like ethereum test net coins mm -hmm. and then you can convert those coins into pulse x and again this is all they're all just they want people to test this stuff they want to 
um, they want to make it so that uh, th they're testing the, the network, right? And the way that they're doing is that they're engaging their community, which is super brilliant because then they're able to see, did this go through? How long did this transaction take? Did, did they get the right conversion of all these things? So I'm hoping that all this stuff converts and this is what I now have in the main net. But I'm also willing to understand that, you know, it's possible everything disappears, but then Richard Hart says, okay, since you participated in the test net, we're gonna double your PLSX tokens. And that would be amazing too. Something, something good is gonna happen from all of this, right? I mean, at some point eventually, we're in early enough that all this stuff is gonna be good. Okay, my friend, so uh, just one more time. Uh, we are not sure if we're going to do a show uh, next Sunday. Uh, if we are gonna do a, a show next Sunday and you are a NFT artist or you are an NFT project and you're in the Miami area, we would love to have you on the show. If you are in Miami and you're not available that Sunday, we may be doing it the week after, or we may be doing it at some point in the near future when I fly back and forth between New York and Florida. Um, so uh, get in contact with us. Let us know that you want to be on the show. We might have had a guest for this show uh, coming up, but we will see about that. And uh, hey, listen, if you like this content, please subscribe and like. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you, guys.